Hello all, let's learn about atmospheric refraction in this video. When we observe objects seen through a turbulent stream of hot air rising above a fire or a heat radiator, the objects appear to be flickering. Let's understand how this happens. The air just above the fire becomes hotter than the air farther up. The hotter air just above the fire is lighter than the cooler air above it. Thus, the hotter air just above the fire is optically rarer than the cooler air. So, when we see the objects by the light coming from them through the hot and cold air layers having different optical densities, refraction of light takes place randomly and the object appears to be moving slightly or flickering. Now, we should also understand that there is a circulation of this cold air and hot air throughout the layers of the atmosphere. So, the refractive indices are not always constant. This is an example of atmospheric refraction on a small scale. We have to understand that under normal circumstances, air in the upper atmosphere is optically rarer and as we come down, the air in the lower atmosphere is optically denser. Thus, we can consider that our atmosphere consists of a large number of air layers having different optical densities. So, when light rays pass through the atmosphere, they undergo refraction while entering from one layer to another air layer of different optical densities and this type of refraction is known as atmospheric refraction. There are some optical phenomena in nature which occur due to the atmospheric refraction of light. The twinkling of stars, apparent position of the stars, advanced sunrise and delayed sunset, flickering of objects when they are seen through a hot fire are all results of atmospheric refraction. Let's understand some of these applications of atmospheric refraction in detail. Due to atmospheric refraction, the stars seem to be higher in the sky than they actually are. Light from a star is refracted as it leaves space and enters the Earth's atmosphere. Air higher up in the sky is rarer but that nearer to Earth's surface is denser. So the light rays bend more and more towards the normal as they approach an observer on the Earth. As a result of this bending of light towards normal, a star appears slightly higher than its actual position when viewed near the horizon. Now, we have to also understand that the atmosphere continuously changes its optical density throughout the layers. So, the refraction of the light from the star is by different amount at different moments. So, when the atmosphere refracts more light coming from a star, the observer feels that the star is brighter. However, when the atmosphere refracts less light to the observer, he feels the star to be dim. So, twinkling of stars is also because of atmospheric refraction. Though stars twinkle at night, planets do not twinkle at all. This is because the stars appear very very small to us and stars are considered to be point source of light. On the other hand, planets appear to be quite big to us and planets can be considered as a collection of large number of point sized light sources. So the dimming effect produced by some of the point sources of light in one part of the planet is nullified by the brighter effect produced by the point source of light in its other part. Thus, on the whole, the brightness of the planet always remains the same and it does not appear to twinkle. When the sun is slightly below the horizon, the sun's light coming from a less dense air to more dense air is refracted downwards as it passes through the atmosphere. Because of this atmospheric refraction, the sun appears to be raised above the horizon when actually it is slightly below the horizon. Thus, we can see the sun about 2 minutes before the actual sunrise and 2 minutes after the actual sunset because of atmospheric refraction. So, the apparent duration of daytime from sunrise to sunset is about 4 minutes more than the true duration. The oval shape of the sun when it is situated near horizon is also because of atmospheric refraction. This is the situation at the time of sunrise and the sunset. So I hope you all have understood what is atmospheric refraction and some of the applications of atmospheric refraction in our daily life. But these are not the only ones, there are yet more to understand which you will learn in your higher classes. 
Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, give your support by liking, sharing and subscribing the channel. Stay tuned for more videos of class 8, 9, 10 science in this channel.